Bonjour mes amis. Welcome to my channel, The French Station, the right stop for learning French. My name is Vignesh, your teacher and friend. I'm very thrilled to help you on your French learning journey and to make the language fun and easy for you. In this video, let's discuss the grammar topics from lesson 3 from the newest edition of the book, Apprenons le Français, part 1. In the previous video, we went through the dialogues from lesson 3. We also went through this classroom vocabulary and school stationery uh, vocabulary. Now let's uh, discuss the grammar topics. Les verbes, nothing but verbs. So we, we all must have already learned about verbs. Verbs are nothing but action words. Anything like to run, to jump, to talk to teach, to learn. All these are nothing but action words and we call them as verbs. And in the uh, previous book itself, we have learned that in French, there are three groups or three kinds of verbs. One is ER, ER verbs, then IR verbs, and then RE verbs. So ER verbs are those verbs that end in ER, IR verbs end in IR, and RE verbs end in RE. Uh, over here, we have a few, uh, um, we, we have uh, a very important irregular verb. So let's see what is given here. In French, as in English, verbs are conjugated to match their subjects. That's a person, thing or a place. And so we've already learned uh, about the subject pronouns. That is je, tu, il, elle, etc. And any verb you take, be it a regular be it a, you know, regular ER verb, regular IR verb, or regular RE verb, or even um, irregular, um, you know, uh, verbs, they are conjugated um, uh, differently with each of the, with each of the subject pronouns, right? So that's what they're telling here, that verbs are conjugated to match their subjects. That's a person, thing, or a place, or an idea. But the conjugations are a little different and sometimes irregular. Okay, so verbs are called irregular when their conjugation changes with each subject. So we, we would have already learned the ER verb conjugation. And for ER verbs, you know that there's a particular pattern which is followed. For example, if you take the verb parley or chante, um, the pattern that we follow is that you need to remove ER first. So you get P-A-R-L, right? To this, you're supposed to add E, E, S, um, E, O, N, S, E, Z, and E, N, T. Uh, and this is how we conjugate most of the ER verbs. But there are uh, many other irregular verbs which do not follow any pattern. And one such verb is the verb ETRA. And ETRA means to be, it's an irregular verb. So you need to memorize the conjugation. You need to know the conjugation uh, as it is. So the conjugation goes this way. In the je form, we say je suis, I am, tu es, you are, il est or elle est, he is or she is, nous sommes, we are, vous êtes, uh, you are, but formal or to adults or to several people. Then il sont is they are in the masculine form. L so is they are in the feminine form. So this is how we conjugate the verb être in French. It's an RE verb uh, and the conjugation is irregular. And they've given note, je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il and elle, all these are called as subject pronouns. Apart from that, they've given you additional vocabulary um, like say. Say means this is or that is. And ce sont means these are or those are. Like pointing at a notebook, you can say c'est un cahier. That's a notebook or this is a notebook. And if there are many notebooks, you can say ce sont des cahiers. These are notebooks or those are notebooks. Then we have the word voici. Voici means here is or here are. And voilà. Voilà means there is or there are. The next topic the nationality, nationalities. In uh, English, uh, most of the nationalities have only one form, right? Like, for example, if you take Chinese, there's no feminine form or plural form for that. Or if you take the nationality Japanese, 
there's no feminine form or a plural form for that as well but certain nationalities like indian canadian american etc they have uh, singular and plural forms right for example indian is the singular form indians is the plural form canadian is the singular form canadians is the plural form but in french um, most of the nationalities have four different forms all right the masculine singular form feminine singular masculine plural and the feminine plural form um certain nationalities like francais anglais you can see that they are the same in the masculine singular and the masculine plural form anglais also it's the same in the masculine singular and the masculine plural forms mm. but most of the nationalities have four different forms like you can see andian there are four different forms forms for andian same thing goes for espanol and other nationalities so let's go through this learn the meanings and pronunciation over here you have the flags flags of different countries and here you have the nationalities under different columns so francais française francais française it means french then andian andien andian andien indian or indians in all the four forms um, so if you point at a boy and if you say he is an indian we say il a il is nothing but he is so il est indien he is an indian that way if you want to point at a girl and if you want to say she is an indian we say elle est indienne she is an indian and if you want to say they are indians like masculine plural we say ils sont indien and they a group of girls are indians we say elles sont indien so this is how we use the nationalities in uh, sentences depending on which person or which group of people we are talking about then we have espanol 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 same pronunciation for all the four but um different spellings and it means spanish then we have italia italian italia italian italian or italians anglais 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 english um america american america american american or americans then saudia saudien saudia saudien um a person from saudi arabia then almond 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 german or germans um so these are the nationalities included in this textbook in the next book we will learn even more number of nationalities and countries let's move ahead the next topic is les articles indéfinis les articles indéfinis this is the indefinite articles so in english we would have learned that there are two indefinite articles one is a and the other one is an um and you know that we use a in front of consonants like we can say a book a car a house a tree etc but we use a n in front of words begin beginning in a vowel right like an idea uh, or an apple uh, an igloo etc uh, but in french there are three indefinite articles uh, so they are u n u n e and d e s and by now you have a fair idea right that in french all the words all the nouns everything that you see around you uh, they are either masculine or feminine for example nouns like book notebook mobile phone pencil pen all these are masculine in french but nouns like car house swimming pool these are feminine in french so what we do is in french um there are three indefinite articles un une and des we use un in front of all the masculine singular nouns and un means a or an so and it's used in front of all the masculine singular nouns and we use the indefinite article une in front of all the feminine singular nouns this also means a or an but we use it in front of all the feminine singular nouns and they means some des it means some it's pronounced as they um, and it, it's used in front of all the plural words 
So the here it's given indefinite articles refer to an unspecified person or thing. It is similar to a, a, a and or one in English and the plural is similar to some. So in English we say um, um, in sentences we use words like a book, a table, a, a cupboard or an idea, uh, an apple, um, an elephant, etc. Right? Or sometimes in the plural form we say some books, some cars, some apples. So th there we use the indefinite articles in French. So there are three indefinite articles. One is en uh, for masculine singular words. For example, en crayon or en stylo. And then une is used in front of feminine singular words. For example, une règle, une gomme, etc. And they is used in front of all the plural words. Like you can say they crayon, they stylo, they règle, they gomme. So irrespective of whether words are masculine or feminine, you can use the word um, they. Um, so over here, uh, it's given that un means a or an for masculine singular words. UN is also means a or an for feminine singular words and DES means some. It is used in front of both masculine and feminine plural words. Um, let's move ahead with the next topic. Pluriel they nom, plural of nouns. So what we do in English is um, for maximum number of words, we just add the letter S to get the plural form, right? So if you take the noun boy, Boys. If you take the noun girl, the plural form for girl is girls. Like this, there are many, many other examples. Computer, computers, mobile phone, mobile phones, table, tables, etc. But there are exceptions also, right? Like if you take the noun leaf, the plural form is leaves. If you take the noun knife, the plural form is knives, right? Like that. Um, what we do in French is that um, all the nouns have a gender, that, that's either masculine or feminine. Um, uh, so all the nouns, whether it's a living thing or non-living noun, everything has a gender in French, either masculine or feminine. And how can we identify the gender? By looking at the indefinite articles. So if you say en crayon, we use un in front of crayon because it's a masculine singular word. And if you say un règle, we use un e in front of règle because it's a feminine singular noun. And for, to, to get the plural form for most of the nouns, what we do is we just add the letter S, just like how we do it in English. But the only difference is the S is not pronounced in French. Like in English, there's a clear difference. Uh, boy is singular, boys is plural, right? But in French, it is not like that. If you say crayon, the plural form is crayon, we write it with the letter S, but pronunciation is the same, like this is crayon, this is also crayon. But how do you identify it, whether it's singular or plural? By listening to the indefinite, uh, by listening to the articles. For example, if you say en crayon, it means a pencil, whereas they crayon is some pencils. Like that en garçon is a boy, they garçon means some boys. Like that in regulars, a scale, the regulars, some scales. Yun fi is a girl or a daughter. The fi is some girls or some daughters. Um, but the singular and plural words will sound exactly the same. Like this is crayon, this is also crayon. Garçon, garçon. Regle, regle. Fille, fille. So no difference in the pronunciation. This way to get the plural form for most of the words in French, we just have to add the letter S. But of course, there are exceptions. Nouns ending in S, X or Z in the singular form do not change in the plural form. So there are some nouns in French. In the singular form, they already end in the letter S, X or Z. And for such uh, nouns, mm, we do not add the letter S in the plural form. They're the same. Like en bas, they bas. En ne, they ne. Ne means uh, nose. Yin croix, they croix. Like this, we have another example. En pays, pays means country. So a country, and the plural form is de pays. Uh, some countries. 
like this you can say ah uh, ah uh, na 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 ah uh, na 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 is nothing but a uh, uh, pineapple so the, in the singular form we write a n a n a s even in the plural form you can say these are na na some uh, pineapples so nouns ending in s x or z in the singular form do not change in the plural form um the third point nouns ending in e a u or e u uh, so these nouns we add the letter x in the plural form for example on gato a cake the gato is the plural form of fur the fur is the plural form like this many other examples are there on gato on gato is a boat it ends in e a u right Uh, so the plural form will be the gato. In the plural form, we just have to add the letter x, and u n changes to d e s. Um, uh, note: plural of other nouns will be learned in more detail in the next uh, book. So with this, we complete the grammar topics from the third lesson. In the next video, let's discuss the exercises. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel, The French Station, to get notified on the upcoming videos. Like it and share it with your friends as well. Until then, abhiyanto. See you soon.